other three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. It's the After Show, where we take a break around here. Man, we're having some fun. Hey, guys, how are you? Awesome. That was Jim. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. I was frightening there. <laughs> Well, it was Pearl Bailey for a minute, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, during the break, I'm running out there, and they're making gumbo in the other room. So, oh, oh, Cue the yeah, violin. Buddy. Cue oh, the violin. man, it is fabulous. Yeah. Life I think have it. So once you start, you're not going to stop. So we'll wait We'll wait till later. So, right. hey, Dale and Larry have been waiting for us for a little while, so let's go ahead and do this. And Dale is in Florence, Alabama, with a range report from a Moms Demand Action Rally. Talk to me, Dale. <laughs> Tom, good good afternoon. It uh, it, it was interesting. I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, well, how'd you know about it in the first place? Uh, well, it, it it was a guy named Tom Gresham. <laughs> uh, were you on, well, were you on the uh, Twitter feed? Well, I, I am, and and that I actually actually looked at one of those, and I I thought, well, I'll, I'll buy that. So I I go in, I type in the zip code, and and and, and lo and behold, today they're having one right over in Florence, Alabama. So uh-huh. it, it it was interesting. I mean, it, it it's really left me with a bad taste in my mouth. I, that's why I picked up some beer and everything to drink when I got home. <laughs> Got to gargle that thing with it, taste away. <laughs> All right. So describe what you saw when you got there. What, what was going on? Well, uh, they they had it they had it at the on the front lawn of the post office there in Florence, which was. Not not a real big venue, but I mean, when I when I got there, I mean, man, it was hard to find a place to park. I mean, it it was a massive crowd. Mm. Uh, okay. Pro- probably probably about fifty people. Uh, okay. Fifty to sixty, probably not over sixty. I mean, that would be the most. Okay. Uh, most most of the people were were genuinely nice. I mean, but now there 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 were some of them that were that that were downright nasty. Well, now, did they, how did uh, they know that you were not one of them? Well, now, now I did go ahead and register and everything. You know, they wanted everybody that came in to, to have mm-hmm. a sticker so they knew who was registered. I mean, no problem with that. Right. Uh, they really didn't know until until the lady that, that was passing around signs and everything asked me if I'd like one of her signs, and I, I just kind of declined and basically explained that I didn't know. Uh, probably wasn't going to agree with anything, but I mean, I, I just wanted to give them a chance to, to change my mind. Which you want to hear them out. I knew, they, I, I, I knew they, they weren't going to, but but it but it was interesting. I mean, so it, you, you were not, the you, end, the cops you, got called and stuff like what? that. I mean, not to me, but... <laughs> were, were you wearing your NRA hat or something? What did you do? <laughs> Tom, I, I was... I, I was completely camouflaged and everything. You know, I didn't wear any, any anything to to draw me out. Right. Uh, so why were the police I, called? I just told the lady. Well, now the cops weren't called to me. They were. There were a couple counter protesters and everything down on the sidewalk mm-hmm. uh, that that were holding up signs and everything in disagreement with them and everything. You know, I mean, they weren't on the lawn and, and part of the right. protest. But but over toward the end of the protest, they. They yelled for everybody to come up and stand on the steps and do a group photograph. Well, they they didn't uh, they didn't tell the the protesters, in which I was down there speaking with them on the sidewalk. Well, they didn't tell them not to not to go up for the picture, so they just walked on up oh, to get in the picture so, too. So, so the pro and gun it, folks went up there and posed for the picture with the anti gun folks. Right, and you had you had this one had this one. You've always got a bully in every crowd. This big. Uh, Big bully and everything kind of kind of tried to stand in the way of the guys he was walking up there, and the guy shifts to go a different way. He keeps on bumping into him and everything, you know, and and, so and a couple the, words were exchanged, and before you know it, and everything you know, the one of the organizers is down there down there watching watching us down there on the sidewalk with her phone, and she's looking around. So I know what that means. I mean, I know they're already called. So they they basically just came out and stood there until they all left. So it sounds to me like the uh, the Moms Demand Action anti-gun folks 
they were setting up. This guy was trying to block the gun people from this, being able to pose. So this, they were basically well, setting up so there'd be a, a confrontation. Well, that that's exactly what it was. That that guy was absolutely trying to create one. Right. And 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 that's that's all it was about. I mean, I I, I actually took a a picture of the group and everything there in front of the courthouse. And I mean, I'm I'm kind of sad that I didn't have the phone running on video. Uh, because it, it it was obvious what was going on. I mean, what what's your it, take it was, away on on their uh, on their organizing ability? Uh, they they have the ability to organize, and 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 even though the even though the group is small, I I don't think anybody needs to discount these people because some of these people are actually real. Some of them are are real malicious and nasty. Yeah. Uh, when when we were down on the sidewalk and the and the counter protesters were would, would sometimes strike up conversation and everything with the people headed up to the little to the lawn there. Uh, some some of those people and everything you know when these guys were trying to give them some some other information and everything mm-hmm. you know I mean they they were real real snappy and real and and real nasty I mean they they were very angry people. Well, it's interesting, Dale, you use that word, because that's the word I've used a lot, is I find the nonviolence gun control people to be very angry, and obviously we know that they are violent, they will kill you, and they've killed people, the anti-gun control, I mean, the gun control people do. Those on our side kind of want to share information, and they won't have any of it. And, you know, okay, I'm going to put on my armchair psychologist hat if you tend to be a very angry person, you know, there's this thing called projection and you think everybody is like that. No wonder you think people shouldn't have a gun because you don't. I actually heard them say, well, I wouldn't trust myself with a gun. And then they say, therefore, you shouldn't have a gun. I'm thinking, well, you're the one that needs help, dude. It's not me. Tom, Tom, there, there was one more little one more little little thing about that thing that really that, that really caught my attention. After after it was over and after they did their little group photo and everything, they had a guy that uh, that that took the microphone and, and and made a little little short speech and everything to to the people that were that were still there and and he was bragging about uh, calling the cops twice here in the last few days to an open carry guy at the local Lowe's hmm. and 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 he said he said that he. He would do that any time that he saw anybody go into a store anywhere that he was shopping with a firearm. He said, "If I see it, he said, I call the cops." And and so that's that that was a real eye opener for me. I wonder what the penalty and, is. And it should be. What's the penalty for filing a false police report? Well, the thing is, you know what? He's, he's not filing a false report. He's saying there's a guy with a gun here. And uh, the police got to come out and find out what it is. When they it's could, a, yeah, when it's they could a total be harassment. Somebody. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a harassment deal, and what he's trying to do is one inconvenience you, or maybe get you killed. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's okay. He'll be okay with that too. Sure. It would be interesting to me to see if there was any kind of sound bites that made the news tonight, Dale. I, I, I I'm going to look at it. Uh, as as a matter of fact, and everything. Uh, can can I use call letters for a local TV station? Yeah, absolutely. A little, oh, okay. All right. Uh, a, a little exchange and everything that I have, which which I will check the, the local media, but I mean, I didn't actually see any of the TV news crews and everything for the area there. Mm-hmm. But 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 just a few days ago and everything, and I and I had the same conversation and everything with one of the organizers about this about this buying guns online without a background check. Mm-hmm. And 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 I had to correct her and everything on that, and I and I had to do the same thing for for one of the guys over at WHNT over in Huntsville, Alabama. He he did an interview and everything after after all these shootings with the president of the Alabama Rifle and Pistol Association, and the interview itself and everything you know, and what he what he put online after he ran the story and everything you know, the text part of it wasn't that bad until he got to the last paragraph where he said that. That ATF says you don't need a, a a background check for 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 an in, individual sale from one to the other or online sales, and so huh. I, I I thought I'm I'm just not going to let this stand. So Good. so I I pressed the button for a correction, and and that's what everybody is going to have to do. I mean, you're going to absolutely just have to call them out. 
And yeah. so I pressed the button for the correction. I didn't get any response. So so I thought, well, all right, we'll see what this does. So I go into the to the news tip line email, and I and I send that. Well, I finally get a response back from the guy. Mm-hmm. And and so he said if it wasn't accurate, he'd make a correction. Well, he didn't do that. He went in and, and, and put a couple things in that, that ATF had told him, thinking that that would suffice. So I, I went ahead and I... I, I reread it the next day, and he still has a part on there about the online sales. Mm-hmm. So I emailed the guy again, and I told him, I said, look, I said, this story is not going to be true until you remove the part about the online sales. I said, either remove the part about the online sales or, or do another story and tell people that you got it wrong and everything. You no, know, it didn't take too long, but he took the online sales part completely out of it. Wow. Uh, well, you know what, Dale? That's what the True Squad is all about. Our motto is, a lie left unchallenged becomes the truth. What he put on there was a lie, and it was going to become the truth, and everybody that read it was going to believe it because he put it out there as a reporter. You made it happen because you were persistent. Not only did you do it once, you watched and did the follow-up and made it happen again. i got to give you a huge attaboy. I mean, there well, you go. I, I, I appreciate it. You, you guys have been good teachers. Well, you, you have done well. You are a great example. That's exactly what we need to be doing. Thank you, Dale. Uh, thank you for the call. Thank you for doing that. Keep it up. Keep letting us know how it's going, okay? Okay. It's okay if I go home and drink my beer now. <laughs> yeah, you can't drink while you're driving, but you, once you get home, you can have all the beer you want. to make it for lost time, yeah. <laughs> have one for me, would you? All right. All right. I'll do it. I'll drink one for everybody. We'll see you guys. Thank Thanks, you. Dale. Thanks, Dale. Appreciate it. Hey, Larry, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. I'll come back, and you're up next here. All right. We'll be right back with more after show. The next big thing for the AR-15 has arrived. The Brownells BRN-180 Upper, a modernized version of the Armalite AR-180, featuring a 16-inch barrel, a 223 wild chamber, and a full-length pick rail. The BRN-180 skips the buffer system to allow complete function of the firearm with a stock folded or extended. Best of all, the Brownells BRN-180 mounts to any mil-spec AR lower. Visit brownells.com today. Want great deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gundelio app today. With Gundelio, you can search for deals, listen to the Gun Talk podcast, watch gun videos, read gun news, and get notifications right to your phone about deals and special offers. Save money on the products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gundelio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. We are back. I told you, Larry, it's not going to take very long. Hey, we got Larry in Wasilla, Alaska, and you've been holding for a long time. I really appreciate your patience. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, Tom. How's yourself? Good. That was uh, quite the call from uh, Dale going to that Moms Demand Action Rally, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was good. I like that. Absolutely. So what's on your mind today, sir? Well, Tom, I was wondering, with all this going on across the nation and so forth, I just wondered what kind of... uh, what we're in store from Congress with with their silly new gun laws that mm-hmm. uh, don't work and uh, criminals don't follow anyhow. I just wondered what they kind of maybe anybody knew what what they had up their sleeve. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking at three bills that have just been introduced into the House, um, and what you're looking at is basically the same two that they're talking about: the universal background check and the expanded or uh, or the red flag law, rather. And those have been introduced, but then there's another one. They've introduced a ban on standard capacity magazines, which would be any magazine holding more than 10 rounds, not just a ban on selling them, but a ban on possession of them. So you would be a criminal if you had a standard capacity magazine. If you had bought a Glock 30 years ago and had a 17-round magazine for it, that would make you a criminal if you still had that. So those have already been introduced into the House. They will probably pass the House. They won't go anywhere in the Senate. Unless, and here's the big deal, unless we all sit on our rears and just don't say anything 
And even Fox is saying, well, you know, 90 percent of the people say that they're in favor of background checks, which if you just take their words may be true. But the way the wording is on the question leads people to think they're asking about the current background check system, not a new background check system, which makes it illegal to even loan a gun to a buddy for a weekend. So uh, if, if basically if our senators don't hear from us a number of them will cave and say, we'll just do a compromise deal. And every time we compromise, we lose rights. We never get them back. And we don't get anything for it. I mean, if you want to say, okay, and I wouldn't offer this, but if you, if you were going to, you'd say, okay, here's my compromise position. You want those? Great. We get national reciprocity, and we get the Hearing Protection Act, and we get silencers off the list, and you have to repeal the Hughes Amendment so that machine guns made after 1986, it's okay for us to buy them. You give us those three things, and we'll talk about the others. That's our compromise position. I don't think we're going to get that, but, you know. Oh, boy. And, and, and you know, they're all hitting the wrong place. I mean, the, the guns ain't the problem. You know, when I was a kid, uh, we talked about guns in school with the teacher. We, we talked about hunting. We talked about what, what kind of guns we had. And there was never, never any shootings like this. And and they're hit on the wrong things. I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play here. You know, break down. You know, they used to read the Bible in the morning before class. Uh, the, the the family breakdown, the violent mm-hmm. video games, and, and I'm just scratching the surface. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. I'm not even going into. Uh, well, you know, Jim, we've talked about this. It's that old scientific principle. If you know. It, if you're getting different results than you used to get, something changed. And when we look at it, we go, okay, well, the guns have not changed, but something has changed right. if you're what's, getting different results. What's, what, what, what's the what variable? Is, yeah. What's, what's the, the variable? variable? It's a basic scientific experiment deal. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk about what those other variables are. Yeah. And I'm glad you said uh, plural because it's not just one. I mean, I, oh, heavens know, the, no. The violent it's video games on their own. I know a lot, a lot of young millennials that play and none of them are spazzes. Right. Um, but you start mixing that with psychotropic drugs, with no father in the home, all that stuff adds up. Well, socioeconomic yeah. is a huge one, mm-hmm. right? Not I mean, only that, but the kind of money people have in the class that they're in. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Jeez, you. Gosh, Jim. <laughs> hey, Larry, we sure appreciate your call and you're exactly right. But man, I'm just telling you this week, this coming week, when you're listening to this right now, everybody's got to go, you know, Call their senators. I mean, I tell you what we do. While we're doing this, Jim, talk for a second. I'm going to type something in. I'm going to give out the phone number here of how to contact Congress, okay? Oh, that's good. Anytime I get a chance to talk is tremendous. Okay, you, you can stop now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm good for the year now. Right? Pretty much good for the year. Oh, that worked out very oh, well. Good. Contacting Congress. There's a, I know they've got phone numbers. Oh, that list. Well, yeah. Yeah, another thing, while you're looking that up. Yeah, go ahead. Everybody's assumed that it's going to pass in the House and it's a done deal, blah, blah, blah. Let's target the Senate. I agree with targeting the Senate. I don't give up. I think we should give up on the House of Representatives well, I think, either. I think they I all agree. need to hear our voice. Yeah. Yes. yes. And the people people say, well, you know, that does no good because I live in Illinois. I live in California. And, my, you know, it's a lost cause. You know, here's the deal. If you if nobody contacts them, then they can stand up and say, I have not heard from a single constituent who has a problem with this. Right. right? Yep. Or or, you know, the other side calls them, bombards them, even if that bombardment's two calls against our zero. So there's your 90 percent. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Right. All right. Let me give out this phone number. This for the podcast so people can actually remember it, perhaps. And this works for the Senate or the House. One phone number for everybody. uh, Area 202-224-3121. That's 202-224-3121. And all you do is just call and say, I would like to talk to, you know, who are my senators? Even if you don't know who your senators are, I live in X. I live in Arkansas. I don't know who my senators are, but I want to talk to them. And they will switch you over and say, and when they answer, you say, I need to speak to the legislative aide who handles the firearms issues. That's all you got to say. They will give you somebody or they may even get it into a voicemail. That's okay. Give them your deal. No red flag laws, no expanded background checks, no caving on gun rights whatsoever. Thank you. Boom. It's my name. I'm a registered voter. This is where I live. And I'm expecting my senator to back us up on the Second Amendment, which means none of these. None. Not one. Boom. There it is. Now, am I the only one that thinks that these red flag gun laws pass and or the um, multi-standard capacity round magazine bans Mm -hmm. pass? This could get real messy. There's a lot of civil folks on our side. There's a lot of people that have also just had enough of this stuff. 
I think we no, you're not the only one. And a lot of us are thinking it. We don't actually like to talk about it because where this could go gets real ugly. I mean, I, I will go there for a second. I'll do the what ifs. If you say, okay, you're going to have to turn in your guns or be you'll be a criminal, people won't. First of all, you get a single digit right. compliance rate. Right. Same on magazines. Single digit compliance. Now what do you do? And that's what I asked him. I said, well, what's your vision of enforcement? What does it look like? Well, I don't know. I mean, well, you know, the only way you do this is go door to door. Mm-hmm. There are, and I don't know what the percentage is, if it's a half percent of people who say, you know what? This is what this country was built on. People fought and died for this country. I will fight and die on this issue. That's one and a half million people. Yes. That's one and a half million people who will say, I will shoot the people who come to, to knock on my door to take my guns or take my magazines. I will kill. And knowing, I know they're going to end up killing me. I got it. Understand that, right? Right. But as a person who believes in this country and thinks this is how we lose our country, this is my line in the sand and I will shoot them. That's, well, you know, and I mean, I know it sounds horrible and that's why I keep saying we don't want to get there. We got to stop this now so we don't get to that point. But when I look down the road, I'm, I don't think you're crazy at all, Jim. I well, not on this issue. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> well, it comes down to the fact that we work every day to be aware of our surroundings and be paying attention and to wear our jewelry like our loyal Texas listener did. <laughs> right, right, right. God, she was great. <laughs> but we work hard at not being a victim. Our country is now wanting us to become a victim to violence because we know and, that gun a, laws. Yeah, or yeah. a felon. Right, right. That you too. Choice. Because you, gun get, laws, you get a choice. Yeah. You can be uh, not a felon or you can be unsafe. You could be a victim. Yeah, gun laws aren't going to prevent the violence. We all know this. This is the common sense part. We know this. But see, they talk past that. That, that is, it's a false premise that the entire gun control arguments built on is a false premise that we have another law. Now, miraculously, scumbag criminals are going to start to follow it. Right. And then they just walk, you know, they don't even talk about it. They just assume that well, that's the deal and go and on. It's interesting. And if you challenge him on it, he said, well, you know, the criminals aren't going to obey the law. I said, well, yeah, but we have to do something. Right. And you're going, are you four years old? What's wrong what? with you? What do you mean you have to well, do something? Let's prosecute these people that we find. We have, well, the guy in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. okay? He shot six cops. They had him in jail over and over and over again. They had him on gun charges. They had him on uh, attempted murder charges. They had him on aggravated assault charges. They had him on, you know, I mean, all this stuff. He's out of jail. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, we know who the bad guys are. Because most of the ones who do this stuff, well, most of the ones who do a lot of the criminal stuff, we've had before. Now, when it comes to the loons who decide to go out and shoot people, we've kind of figured out at least part of that. Not all of it, but part of it is the copycat deal. Mm -hmm. And the coverage you get. I was really kind of pleased in the last couple of weeks. There were several media outlets who would not use the shooter's name. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is that the answer? It's not the answer, but I think it's part of the answer. Yeah, I don't think there's a, the answer. Maybe quit talking about it for a whole week. Well, or if a whole bunch of people end up shooting these SOBs as soon as they come out. You know, there's there's something else here. Uh, Dayton, or not, you know, in your state there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, police responded in 30 seconds. They shot this guy, hit him 24 times. They shot like 60 times, okay, 60 shots, but they hit him 24 times. And I want to take that and say, it took 24 shots to stop this guy. I only give you 10. I'm only going to give you 10. (laughs) You got it. You got there ahead of me. There it is. (laughs) You have 10, but you needed 24. Sucks to be you. Hmm. Well, the next thing would be, yeah, you can only, only have one mag with you. Well, not the police though, right? Well, well, no, no. The police different. are always exempt from all of these. Right. The police are always exempt. Well, that's different. Or as the was the. the uh, I hate to see you guys are dumb, but don't you realize their lives are more important than ours? God. Yes. But mine's clearly. important until the tenth. <laughs> yeah, it, it is important through that ninth <laughs> round. Your life is worth ten rounds. Our right. lives are worth whatever we can carry. And, and can I say there was a gentleman that called who would not give me his name. He did not want to go on the radio show, but said, "Please share my information." And I'm going to hold up my piece of paper because I have notes here. He has, unfortunately, been at an armed, he's been robbed, armed robbery, seven times. Oh, jeez. Shot twice. So he says, seven times I have been on the wrong end of the gun. 
And obviously these people have purchased, transported, and used illegally the firearms that they possessed. And his whole point was, regardless, in history of any country that has ever tried to ban firearms, never have they been successful because of the black market. Mm -hmm. And until something is done with the black market and keeping the criminals you know, Which ineligible, you, can't. you right. can't, right? The laws are useless. And that was his point. You're mm-hmm. never going to solve this problem. All of this work, all this conversation that they're having is useless. It makes them feel yeah. good. It doesn't get different results. Well, they say we have the right to feel safe. They'll actually say that. You I go, feel safe when I'm dressed, safe. right? Well, you, don't, you actually do not have a right to feel safe. You don't even have a right to be safe. Yeah. There's no such right. You, just, you made that up. It doesn't exist. But the idea that you have a right to feel a certain way, or you, you know what? You can feel any way you want to. It's a choice. Mm-hmm. You can actually choose to feel one way or the other. So, no, you don't get to infringe upon my rights or make us less safe because you want to feel a certain way. Yeah. That's idiotic. Well, I hope he's got the chutzpah, but Trump said in his speech earlier in the week that, you know, we don't have to do something. We have to do something that works. And I, I fed you that earlier in the show. And, yeah. and, and hearing him say it was like, because I'm going, oh, no, he's buying into their crap. What's he's the buying bigger into card? their crap. And then he said that. I'm like, huh, well, maybe he, you know, he, he does it's have a, a... Ye- It's a yes, but. I mean, I, I think Trump has as much backbone as we help him develop. I, look I, mean, I mean, it is up to us to give him the support he needs. I mean, he may be saying, I don't want to do this. But I'm just not hearing from anybody. I, I need you guys out there to help me out. That's our job. Right. And it's not right. like next year, it's this month, it's this week, it's tomorrow. It's, you know, if you're not doing this, I mean, just, you mean who do you think going to do it? We're the source of power, Tom? What? We are the source of power. Wait, what? Wait till the king finds out. <laughs> We'll be, we'll be on our own, this just is, us and 12 other colonists. This is mind-boggling, because I was pretty sure that's the way it started, is the people <laughs> came first. Yeah, we, we the were people. We were the source. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when I was out in uh, Oregon with uh, Ray, my good buddy out there, he had a will not comply hat. Real? Oh, I nice. Said, that's pretty cool. He said, oh, yeah. He says, these are all over now. I said, okay, cool. I said, well, I'd like to get one of those. He said, well, I, I know where you can. So he called the gun store where he got it. And the guy said, we are out. Oh, my gosh. Good. We, we can't keep them in stock. He says, but I got one that I can get for Tom. So I went in and I bought a, actually, he wouldn't let me buy it. He was a nice guy. He, uh, he listens to the show. But I now have a will not comply hat. But let me just tell you, that's the mindset now. It's just like, this is not going to happen. There's no way that you make me comply. And they said, well, you know, we're going to tax you. You're not hearing me. I mean, it's always interesting for those who think, well, we have the power to make you do things. And you're thinking, if everybody plays according to the rules, you are correct. But what happens to your premise if we choose not to play by the rules? Well, and you hate to sound like that person. but I in, do hate to sound like that person. <laughs> but in all honesty, we are the people... We are the people, but we are to limit the government. The government is not supposed to set out limitations for us. And all this glossy, fine handprint that's going all over the what they classify as the um, interpretation of the Constitution doesn't right. apply. It doesn't apply. Right. It's not the original purpose of the Constitution. I'm sorry. Oh. Your law is void. Oh. <laughs> Amazon Prime, I will not comply hat, 1795. One really? Size fits all. Seriously? Yeah. It's not Prime, but is it's it, Amazon. Is it in oh, stock? Oh, okay. Uh, I just put 20 in the cart. I don't know. I don't your own, so. <laughs> <I sure laughs> know. <laughs> there may not be any left now yeah, that Jim got there. Yeah, it says in stock, so yeah. Star, well, that's... Ship from Star Memories is the company. I got, we we got to take a quick break here, guys. You know, I mean, just it is radio. We've got to do that. But I, when you come back, i got to read you a quote that kind of personifies this whole thing we're talking about. It's kind of like, really? Built for personal and home protection, the Smith & Wesson M&P 380 Shield EZ pistol features an easy-to-load magazine with load assist button, an easy-to-rack slide, and the M2.0 crisp trigger and enhanced grip texture. With its easy-to-rack, easy-to-pack, and easy-to-shoot design, 
The M&P 380 Shield EZ is perfectly sized 380 protection. Find out more at smith-wesson.com. This is Ryan Gresham with Gun Talk. Visit guntalk.com slash win to enter our latest giveaway. This month, enter to win with Surefire. One person will win Surefire's X300U handgun light, featuring a stunning 1,000 lumens. And two folks will win Surefire's stiletto rechargeable pocket flashlight. Enter now through August 30th at guntalk.com slash win. That's guntalk.com slash win. Okay, when I read this, I had to go over like two or three times. Story coming out of uh, Pennsylvania after the shooting in Philadelphia. Uh, the felon in possession of a gun, which is illegal, which is shooting police officers, which is, oh yeah, illegal. Illegal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? And Who knew? What, law, what law are we going to pass that's going to make him stop doing all this? Anyway, so we got this. You'll love this. Uh, State Senator Anthony Williams, a Philadelphia Democrat, said uh, the signing, the governor signed a thing to form a task force or something, you know, uh, was emotional for him. Six Philadelphia police officers were shot on Wednesday and five other people were wounded in a separate shooting in Philadelphia. Mr. Williams praised the governor for taking, now wait for it, this is the quote, for taking the politics out of whether you have the right to have a gun or not. And recognizing the dignity of human beings is first and most important. He's right about one part. What? The very last part. The, the there, dignity, of, the human dignity of human beings. Yeah. They're just yeah. not seeing this, the picture. Yeah. He says, but the governor is taking the politics out of whether you have the right to own a gun. Basically saying, we're no, now didn't. having a discussion of whether you have the right to own a gun at all. Uh, that was covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah 200 and some odd years ago. <laughs> we actually made that number two. And what we said, was, once again, for those who didn't quite catch it in the regular show, the Bill of Rights is not a list of permissions. It's not, we give you the permission to have guns. It is a list of things that we are, there are restrictions on the government. These are things you cannot do. You cannot stop freedom of speech. You cannot infringe upon the right to keep and bear arms. They're, they're not things that we get to do. It's things that you can't do. And when you understand that, you really start to understand what it's about. Because, as I say, we just came out of this horrid uh, war of independence, and we fought the British, and we fought to the death. A lot of us did. A lot of our countrymen did. And they weren't about to turn around and say, we want to make sure that a strong central government is the only force out there and that we, the people, have absolutely no means to defend ourselves or to overthrow a tyrannical government. They weren't going to do that. That makes no sense. It's about hunting. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, nobody uses an AR-15 for duck hunting. Well, okay. On well, that, you may be right, but, you know. Well, if you do, but, maybe we do need to have a little talk. But, but, since, but since that uh, is not what it's about, but you know, it's like, oh, Ugh. my gosh. All right, Michelle, we had a little glitch there, but we were able to reconnect. In the meantime, I understand you have locked Jim out of the studio. <laughs> yep. Oh. This is fabulous. <laughs> I just, love this. You know, what? the man he has a key. That's just oh, not right. no. <laughs> he's not back, is he? Jerk acts like he owns a place. Jeez, <laughs> oh, he's back. Are we, are, are we restarted the show without you, Jim? Just letting you know. It's probably okay. going to be a great show. <laughs> we were off to like, the you best guys, start You guys ever. just want ratings is all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. See the power. The power we had. <laughs> That's right. I want the power. <laughs> uh, so let's see. This was single shot day for us. This was yes. fun. Mm-hmm. That was fun. I do love that number one. It's such a gorgeous rifle. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of just, you know, it's that retro thing. It's like 1911s and, you know, lever actions and... You know, it's like the muzzle loading stuff, that the black powder stuff you do, Michelle. Right. Like it just, it's, it's a connection with something back there, but I don't know what it is, but it's, it's there. It's real. It's awesome. Lever <sighs> action 1911. That would be cool. Single shot. Single yeah. shot lever action 1911. <laughs> what? You guys are confusing me. Thread, threaded barrel, though. <laughs> yeah, you but know. it's a high capacity. You know what? I... <laughs> high capacity single shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
Let's see, you know, if we could just get that down just one less than that one shot, a single shot, it'd be good. Such a hard time finding mag- mags for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, Can't God. help you. you. You have to laugh, otherwise it just, you go crazy. I, man, our uh, guy who went to the uh, protest, he was upset. Yes, he was. I mean, he, he was looking for a drink, just telling you, well, you know. And you know, and the... Dale, the, yeah. You, the reason I asked him to follow up on the uh, news media is because you know what kind of sound bite is going to yes. hit there. It's going to yeah. show how the pro-gunners were trying to invade and take right, over right. this right. anti-gun sp- and, you as, know, as opposed to the truth. <laughs> exactly. But that's, that's the kind of stuff. And that's how we get portrayed. That's why people think we're yeah. so evil. Man. But, but I was very thankful that you had Jordan Michaels on here today. Who got to set straight the fact checking numbers? Ah, uh, yes. Well, now we have uh, Kylie Ann Hunter from the Brady Group telling us stuff last week. You know, no, we didn't include anybody over 17. I'm thinking, what? Well, and I told her, I said, you had to because you can't get those numbers without going over that. Oh, no, we didn't. And then he come, Jordan comes on and says, yeah, I was uh, last year, I confronted them about the same thing. And the same woman, Kylie Ann, admitted to me. That, yeah, we included 18 and 19 year olds because it got our numbers up. And he had the quote. <laughs> yes. I mean, she, he quoted her. And he's a reporter. Oops. And, and, Oops. I mean, she, so just there she is saying, yeah, we included 18 and 19 year olds to bump up the numbers because we couldn't get the impressive numbers that we wanted otherwise. And then telling us the exact opposite last week. Just, I mean, come on. It's, is there any other word for it than just lying? No. And I still think it would be interesting to see. As to, you know, we've talked about, like, was it due to um, gang violence? Was it due to homicide? You know, was it suicide? Give me the breakdown also of these, because I think it's extremely important. And that is where we start to get to what the root of the problem is. Right. I mean, that to me is common sense. Where is the breakdown? Where are we seeing the majority of these numbers? Because that's what we need to go after. And, you know, and we lose sight of the fact that, and the numbers are still, after all that stuff, they're still at the lowest point that they've been since the National Safety Council has been recording these numbers. Yep. So we, we, the numbers are, look, it's tragic if it happens at all. We get that. But the numbers are going down, down, down. Now they're at the really, really, really small level. And as the media exposure is going directly it, the opposite way. And yes, and as the public. It's like the old deal. We talk about uh, murders are down by 50 percent. Gun crime is down by 70 percent. And yet the public, when asked, thinks that both of those are going up. Mm-hmm. Well, two things. One is why? Well, because we know of the, the screwy reporting. But number two, you cannot achieve meaningful public policy if the public has been completely misled. And what they think is true is not true. Can we call like. I mean, that's inciting panic. <laughs> Isn't there a call that could be made against that? That's all they're you know, doing. I, I, I have thoughts on things that can be done, but I'm not allowed to say those. I mean, you know, you, I'm reading too many of these dark novels these days, so we're not going to be doing anything. You were talking, you were talking about favorite calls of the show. And mine's a total toss-up between Sharon from Texas. Oh, yeah. And who is great and, and humorous but poignant. And Scott from Oklahoma, who was just, he did yeah. not want to talk and forced himself to. Mm-hmm. He said, he said, I don't want to do this. I, I don't want to be a gun rights activist, he, you know, and yet he's doing good work and he's contacted the media and calling them on their lives and forcing them to correct stories, you know, and, and going and meeting with, you know, uh, elected representatives and standing up. And that was, that was a profile in courage for me. That yeah. really was. Yeah. yeah, he did awesome. And he's doing awesome work. Also, I do love Sharon. What was the thing she said? Yeah, do I said, wear do, jewelry? Yeah, he said, do, do you own a gun? She said, do I own jewelry? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Then one is just as common as the other in Texas. So mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. God, well, oh, that was a movie with Sandra Bullock, Miss Congeniality, where this guy jumps on uh, the uh, Secret Service guy or somebody jumps on fell and says, he had a gun. And Santa Book says, it's Texas. My hairdresser has a gun. (laughs) (laughs) I've not seen that movie. (laughs) Oh, God. Well, she's hilarious anyway. Well, let's hope Texans uh, 
get off their rears and realize that they're not going to be able to do that if things continue to turn blue. Well, all because the states for that matter. Got, uh, yeah, I know, but I mean, mass te- migration. Texas is Texas. huge. Yeah, the illegal voting issue is huge. The Congress, mm-hmm. yeah, the, uh, the electoral, electoral college. college. Yep. Oh, yeah. it's massive. What, it's what would happen point. to the electoral college if they go blue? Is you're just looking at a tidal wave. Mm-hmm. This and it may or may not happen in 2020. Uh, but, but they're not going away. 24 or 28. Yeah, it's it's, it's that's where we are. Yep. And this stuff only is going to get worse if we don't all, every single one of us, get involved. And, you know, I hear people going all the time, well, you know, I, I hate politics. Politics is nasty. I don't want to get involved in that stuff. This well, then you're going to get We don't have really, a choice. This isn't you're, really you're, politics. This is life. Every, everything's yeah. politics. Yeah. No, this is, this is politics. It's, this is, if you are, politics will happen with you or without. If you choose not to participate, then you get to let everybody else tell you how you live your life. It really is as simple as that. Yep. You know, they will tell you what you can and can't do. Done. You know, you have a chance to say something about it, to have a, a voice in this. If you choose not to, then, you know, it's that STFU. Yeah, but I, I don't like speaking in crowds. Well, either does Scott. Scott was scared to death yep. when he called in. He, he was nervous as he could be. Yep, and he didn't actually didn't ease up much at the end. You could tell he was, I don't know if he was much nervous at the end or he was just choked up. Because it's this. This isn't just theater. This is our lives. It's our country. It. I was just going to say that. It's 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 our country. And you know what would you do? I mean, come on. Michelle's husband and son signed up, put their lives on the line in the military, as have so many others. And we won't make a phone call. Right. I loved it when Scott said, "You know, come on." The, the signers of the Declaration of Independence knew that that was a a suicide document. When you sign your name to this, you are saying, you know, I know you will come and kill me. You will take me and put me in prison if I sign this. And yet I'm going to sign it because it's that important. Yep. Can we do anything? Le- can we not have a phone call for heaven's sakes? Yeah, no doubt. And this was all based on previous countries' history. Yes. It wasn't by mistake. And, and the people who wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were all scholars. They all spoke a number of languages. They yes. knew about history in other countries. They knew all the way back to the Greeks and the Romans and everybody else. They understood what worked, what didn't work. Read their notes once as to how they came up with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right, one more time. I'm going to give out this number in case people missed it. You call this number. You can get the House or the Senate, 202-224-3121, 202-224-3121. All you can do is say, do it. There it is. You know, it just, it's going to take five minutes of your time we need and to then have, it's done. We need and to have then, a, you know what? And then you can go nanny, nanny, nanny to all your buddies because mm-hmm. they didn't do it yet. So, so do it for my grandkids. Make those phones ring. There you go. This is an Tell action time. item. Hit them hard. There mm-hmm. you go. All right, guys. Thank you. I have to go uh, figure out how to put the magazine in these single shot guns. This is. Well, you know, a little, little gumbo will help. I was going to say, maybe you should eat first. Gumbo. <laughs> play a little Jimmy Buffett song. Ever, he's got that song. I will play for gumbo. Right. There you go. All right, All right guys. You, great week, and we will do it again because nobody's the boss of us. Yes, sir. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Yeah.